Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. This week's video, I'm gonna show you how to put together your own life-saving first aid kit. So it's no secret that I like pre-made first aid kits. It takes out a lot of the guesswork on what you're getting. You know you're getting solid supplies and it all comes neatly packed in whatever kind of carrying case you decided to order. That being said, any company that is making a pre-made first aid kit with all the supplies in it is going to mark it up you know, between 10 and 20%. I don't think this is an unethical decision. I don't think this is bad on those companies because it does take man hours to pack that kit. It takes you know research to figure out what you're putting in it, how it fits, and then you're benefiting from that. So you're gonna pay a little bit more. On every single one of those review videos, I get somebody saying, well, you could build it for half as much. And that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I did want to go through the process of building a first aid kit, how I look at it, how I do it. Right here, you have a kit I built for trail running, uh, just something easy to put in my pack. And as you can see, I'm not always using these pre-packaged items I'm getting. So we're gonna go through kind of the selection of what equipment you're gonna put in here how to pack it, and some different options for different levels of budget. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So let's start with gear selection, then we can talk about how you're gonna carry it a little bit later. I am listing these items in what I see as kind of an order of importance. So if you can only afford one piece at a time, just pay attention to the list I'm laying out and go from the start to the end, and eventually you'll have what you need in the most effective order in my opinion. Let me be clear that this kit is a life-threatening kit. I'm not talking about your really minor bumps and bruises. Everybody has band-aids around the house, little bandages, you know, probably some antibiotic ointment. That is great, and I would highly recommend you include them in a kit, but maybe keep them a little bit more accessible than we're gonna be making today. So this is life threats only. First and foremost, the, the first thing that I would put in any kit is some kind of packing gauze. Now, you can go with quick clock gauze just like this, or you can go with just plain packing gauze. And really the survival rates between these two are very similar. So while this is the gold standard, if you can't afford the $44 or $45 that this costs, this guy right here is going to run you about $4. So there is a big difference between these two and they do almost the exact same thing. So for the purpose of this, this video, we're gonna pack the quick clot. Now, just a quick review, this is to pack junctional sites, the base of the neck, armpit, and groin. But also if you don't have a commercial tourniquet immediately available, this can be used to pack any wound on the extremity regardless of its location. So it's a very, uh, good piece of equipment to have for your life threat. So this is what I'd start with first. I should say that all of these supplies, I'm pricing it off of Medical Gear Outfitters. Uh, this is Skinny Medic store, and I know we tease a lot, but we're actually friends. So uh, he keeps fair prices, and you know you're getting authentic stuff from there. The code PREPMEDIC will get you 10% uh, off, I believe, and then I've got an affiliate link down below. But if that doesn't work, use the code or don't and get it from somewhere else. Just make sure it's a reputable company. All right, so number two, what we're looking at is a tourniquet of some kind. Now, uh, I like the cat tourniquet just because it's what I've been trained on. Uh, it's a solid piece of equipment, but the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care, uh, they have uh, recommended a pretty big list now. It's not just this and the soft T wide. So go on and check out what some options are. I like this guy, it's easy. I like the orange color for civilian uses because you're probably not getting shot at. You don't need to be concealed or have a low uh, profile color wise. So the orange is just really noticeable when they roll into that uh, emergency department. So we've got a cat tourniquet. This will run you about $30. Uh, one note with these is that there are a lot of counterfeit cats on the market, especially on Amazon. I don't buy any medical supplies on Amazon because you really, it's really hard to verify that you're getting it from a good uh, source. And the counterfeits, while they might seem great, they break really easily, the windlasses break really easily, the cords snap, so it's just not worth it. If the price seems too good to be true, it probably is. These will be marked down slightly here and there, but most of the time these will run you between $25 and $30 regardless of the supplier. So. Cat tourniquet is what I'm keeping in there. So now we have two items for major extremity bleeding. The next thing we're gonna throw in there is going to be some kind of 
uh, pressure dressing. So this is a NAR emergency trauma dressing, tons on the market, um, and really, they're all great. They all work excellent. Just find one that has a form factor that you want. So this guy right here costs about $9 on Medical Gear Outfitters. Um, it's just a wrap for anything. So you can wrap one of these in if you've uh, done that on a junctional site. You can also, you know, wrap a head wound or maybe that arm wound that's bad bleeding but not quite life-threatening so you're not going to apply a tourniquet or pack it. This is going to come in really handy. So that's the next thing I'm going to put in there. And uh, coming down a little bit farther, we're going to look at doing a Mylar blanket. Like I said, this is what I view as kind of the order of importance. So these are space blankets. They reflect heat back to the casualty. Keep in mind that even on a hot day, uh, your body starts to lose the ability to clot at 95 degrees. So if the temperature is under 95 degrees, you really have to work to keep that casualty warm and they're not producing a lot of heat themselves. So insulating them and wrapping them in a mylar blanket in cases of extreme trauma is really important. And I think that's something that can go in any kit. Once again, tons of different sizes, form factors. This is a really cheap one. Um, and this guy will run about $5, but you can get uh, much better items. You know, North American Rescue has some uh, that are a little bit thicker and more insulating. All right, next up, we've got chest seals. So I put this pretty low on the list of things that I see are important. So these are hyphens, they're uh, laminar valve, which have been shown to be some of the more effective on the market for reducing the instance of a tension pneumothorax. That's a collapsed lung that's pushing uh, the mediastinum over and causing a uh, kind of obstructive shock. So I like these because there's an entrance and an exit that's pretty blatantly for you know your gunshot victim. Uh, however, this can be used to cover an abdominal wound, keep some dirt and grime out of it. Um, it's good for those chest wounds. Great item to have, but I put it low in priority. Also, the chances of having somebody, you know, with a sucking chest wound kind of in day-to-day -day life out on the trail, something like that, it's relatively rare. Um, you know, contrary to what the media says, you know, you're not just walking down the street in the U.S. seeing people get shot left and right. Um, it's still something that is relatively uncommon. So something that you should have, but not necessarily the first priority uh, for a kit like this. All right, next up, we have an NPA. So you can get one NPA. This guy is like $5, $6, um, but you can also get a variety of sizes, and I think that'll run you about $30. So size these to the people that you are around. If this is a range kit and you're going out with a bunch of guys your size and you fit a 28 French, great. This will work excellent for you. Get a 28 French NPA. But if you're going out with your kids, size them for an NPA. See which ones fit them and carry those in your kit. So this is just the one I'm going to put in here, but you can get a variety of sizes. 28 French is kind of the standard in a lot of IFACs because most of them are built around a military model where you have you know, 20 to 30 year old fit guys um, that are going out and they're all going to fit that 28 French. But that's not the case stateside in your everyday life. And if you're building your own kit and you're trying to budget it, the government's not picking up the bill. So I'm going to assume that you're not uh, using this for a military application. All right, we've got a couple other things. Now we've got this, this is like a four by four. Uh, I didn't even price it out because this will be cents. You can get this anywhere, North America, or a lot of websites have them, um, but also you can get you know pretty much any bandage at Walgreens will work. And I'm throwing this in here for your minor bleeding. You know, you've got a scrape you wanna cover up, but we don't need to break into any of these uh, supplies necessarily. And then a couple other things, we've got gloves, once again, not pricing them out. These are really cheap. You could even get like some food server gloves. Um, and I bet you if you walked into a subway, they'd give you a handful of them if you asked nicely and bought a sub. So gloves, if you have them, once again, though, your skin makes a great barrier, especially in those like hyper emergent situations. We always wear gloves on the ambulance, on the helicopter. That being said, like when it's you responding out, a lot of times this is something that's forgotten. And so long as you don't have uh, exposed wounds on your hands, your skin's going to be a good barrier for most diseases. So it's not always my priority. Uh, last but not least, we're going to look at trauma shears. So I like expensive stuff. I like things because I use them a lot and I like the X shear. Uh, that being said, these are about $40. You can get a cheaper pair of trauma shears for you know $5 and under. So if it's something you're going to use once, go ahead, get cheap shears. They're going to work that one time. If it's something where you might use this more than once um, or you're using it for multiple things, I would go with something a little bit more expensive, especially if you're doing this professionally. So 
that's it. This is what I would put in like a life-saving kit. Now, one uh, noticeably absent item that I know I'm going to get called out for is uh, going to be a face mask for CPR, some kind of face shield. Honestly, uh, in my everyday life, like on the ambulance, we have bag valve masks. We have ways of breathing for people because we have respiratory issues as well. Out and about for life-saving care, if I'm doing CPR on somebody, I'm going to go to hands-only CPR. That breath or those two breaths every 30 compressions have really been shown to be no better for survival than just doing good quality compressions for the patient with an open airway. Every time you come off their chest, they're going to inhale a little bit and they're going to circulate more oxygen. So if you want to throw in a face shield in here, if you were trained 30 to 2, uh, do what you were trained to do. So I would recommend throwing that in. So that's everything I have in here. Now, storing this, you can do this multiple ways. Now, I have a way I like to do it, but if you really want like cheap grocery store option, go with a heavy duty plastic bag. Throw these components in there and you can throw this kit anywhere. Most of us don't need uh, a nylon kit because those are meant to be mounted to things. And unless you're walking around with molly all the time, or you have something specifically you want to molly it onto or attach it to in a specific situation, those kits aren't going to do anything for you except maybe organize it in a specific way, make it easier to get out in certain situations. For most of us though, we can just throw this in a plastic bag. I, however, prefer to vacuum seal it. Now, Vacuum sealers are something a lot of people have uh, in their kitchen. They're great, you know, for storing meats and, you know, getting food to not go bad quite as fast. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can buy them for like $30 on up on Amazon. Just read the reviews, make sure you're getting one that actually works. But uh, a lot of them work really well. This one, I have no idea what the brand is. This is like an old Dropbox one from my in-laws uh, that they had at one of their gift shops. So I have no idea. It works well for me. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of their bags. And full disclosure, in the interest of transparency, this is my third take uh, in actually putting this in a bag, getting in the vacuum sealer, had a little bit of problem with some of the quality on these. So it goes to show you get what you pay for. Make sure you're buying some quality bags there. I think I have it figured out. I at least know how to use my equipment now. So here we've got the uh, bag. Now you can get these in bags. You can get them in a tube format where you seal one end, then the other, and that allows you to accommodate a wide range of different uh, equipment and sizes. It's important when we're packing this, that we do this in an order where things are very accessible uh, where they need to be. So we want our really like high acuity items, things that are really time sensitive near the top so we can grab those first. A disadvantage of using a vacuum seal or a plastic bag as opposed to nylon is that not everything is laid out in a very specific order. When we open this, it's all gonna go everywhere. So obviously that doesn't work for everybody. It will work for most people kind of going around their everyday lives. So we're gonna first put in the tourniquet because it's relatively thick and it just kind of takes up one whole side of this bag. I'm gonna then take the hyphen chest seals because they're relatively thin and I'm gonna squeeze those in right behind the tourniquet. Now these chest seals actually fit very well uh, just lengthwise in the bag. So that's actually really nice. My OCD likes that quite a lot. If you're not quite as OCD as me, you don't have to take as much time to do uh, everything that I'm doing right here. Next, we're gonna take the uh, gauze pad because once again, it's relatively thin. It just fits behind everything. We'll slide that back there. ETD is not quite as time critical because it's not necessarily used for life-threatening bleeding. And that is going to go kind of in the back next to the tourniquet, just like that. All right, we're gonna take the survival blanket and the combat gauze right here because they're both relatively the same size and we're gonna tuck those right next to the tourniquet. Now, I get it, the uh, uh, space blanket isn't really as like high acuity as a lot of the stuff, but it, since it's the same form factor, I'm putting them together. Next, I'm gonna take the NPA, put it next to everything, and then I'm going to take these gloves and kind of willy-nilly, just wrap them up a little bit, put them on top. You know, if you don't have the gloves right away, there's no point in having gloves. Um, so they need to be relatively accessible in the kit. Now, I didn't forget the trauma shears. We'll talk about that in a second. So if this was a Ziploc bag, Bob's your uncle, you're done. You don't have to do anything else. It's gonna work just fine. I like the vacuum sealer because I feel like it's a little bit more compact. Uh, and then I feel like these bags protect it a little bit better than a standard uh, Ziploc bag. 
So I'm gonna take this right here, put it into the end of my vacuum sealer as carefully as I can. We're gonna pop this down on top of it and we're gonna start it. And just like that, we have a completely sealed first aid kit. Now you have to be a little bit careful of the steam right when it comes out because it's still hot and it can rip back apart. But you can see how compact this is. I can put this in just about anything. And like I was talking about earlier, you don't need a nylon case necessarily. This provides almost as much protection as a nylon case. You can put this in a glove compartment, throw it in a backpack, desk drawer, uh, wherever you carry medical supplies, this will probably work for you unless it's like on body. The other great thing about this is it's buildable. So if you want a humongous first aid kit, you can take a huge roll of this and you can vacuum seal the whole thing. It's gonna be just fine. Now, uh, I did not forget about the trauma shears and we need to talk about how to open something like this. So first and foremost, trauma shears are something you need right away. They're usually metal and plastic, so they're not gonna be degraded by the elements. Honestly, I would just take your trauma shears, I'd take some tape, and it looks janky, but I swear it works. I would just take that and I would tape your trauma shears right to the front of your kit. Then, if the next trick I'm about to show you doesn't work, uh, you can take this, you can get open these supplies um, relatively easily. So, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how you can open a vacuum sealed container without a tool. Um, although, like everything, there is a failure rate. So all you have to do here is this plastic margin where there's no corrugations, uh, I don't know, where there's none of this cross pattern here. You just take this and you cut just a small slit, doesn't need to be big, and you can cut one on the other side too, so you're not searching for it. Both of these will allow you to open this kit very, very quickly. So to get this kit open, all I have to do is I just take it right here, and I tear, and now I have access to all my supplies. But like I talked about earlier, it comes up out in kind of a hodgepodge. And when you're under stress, I guarantee this stuff is going to be anywhere. So make sure you're assessing if a vacuum sealed first aid kit is right for you or if you do need to go with a nylon option. I will leave links down below for all of these products as well as Medical Gear Outfitters have an affiliate link down there along with a code. Sometimes YouTube removes affiliate links but it'll never remove my discount code. So with all of that being said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.